Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we refound the Moserine Mausoleum in Albion, now that it's been redesigned and everything's reset. And we continued the aunt's quest here, which involved us finding the unclear bomb in a massive tomb somewhere near the bottom of the mausoleum. And, oh, and also totally unrelated to the quest, I also got a hint for where the Dismal Chamberlain might be, a quest that we started a long time ago. And, well, just continuing it now. Descend into the vaults to search for the Dismal Chamberlain. Let's do that. No one seems entirely sure of which of the vaults is the deepest. The footman advises you to just keep going down until there's no down left. It isn't long before your legs are aching. The vaults seem to offer much more down than the footman had implied. You passed your last coffin long ago. It seems like there's nothing else here but dust and cobwebs. There are torch brackets on the walls, but no torches. At first, you thank heaven you brought your lantern, but much further down, where the steps are crumbling away, you find the deepest vault bathed in harsh, red, unrelenting light. What the hell is going on down here? The stain beneath marble. The floor cracks and creaks underfoot, as though marble has become ice. Scarlet tendrils have crept, ivy-like, over the walls. When you pick at them, they crumble like scabs. What the hell? Examine the strange vault for traces of the Chamberlain. The trail ends here. When you place your palm against the floor, it comes away sticky, hot, and red, as though you just thrust your hand inside a freshly slaughtered sow. Sow? Sow. The entire vault is stained with something. A sickness in the air and a wrongness in the stone. Blood-like, but not blood. You search for the Chamberlain for what feels like hours to no avail. If you return with bright eyes and a cold hand around your heart, you will find that which you seek. Huh. Cold hand around your heart. I think that's referring to the cold uh, soul effect status. I'm not sure about bright eyes. Ooh. Um, let me take a picture of this because I think it's going to be important to figure out exactly what bright eyes means later when I want to come back. Okay, I don't think there's anything more to do here, so let's go back to London. want to try to get some more people now that I've got 10 slots available on my ship. I also want to dump off some of the extra stuff I have, like the literature and these concealed cavities and cabinet of curiosities. And I want to ditch this concealed cavity since I don't need to worry about hauling uh, contraband right now. So let's go. Whole way back is unexplored, so I'm not going to cut or anything. Man, this is really tight. Ooh. Found that all the way next to the horror over there. No thanks, I'm good. Thank you for your service, Intrepid Cavi. Ooh. This looks different. We've been to the graveyard before, but now that it's been updated... It seems... It seems like there's bigger chunks. Like, there were pretty small chunks before. You can kind of dodge around them pretty easily, but these are huge. Oh. Oh god. Oh god. I 
should do it. Mm, unlicensed chart or unusual cargo? Unlicensed chart. Minister stamp permit. New total four. Yeah, I need more of those. I've been running out. Yeah, these are definitely much bigger, more continuous chunks of graveyards. Oh, hello. You shoot those big rockets, don't you? <laughs> nice flying. Good shooting on my part. He's spin away to another dimension. I'll teach you to grave rob. Hmm, <laughs> now that I have a drill, I can strip it for parts. Or demolish it. Wait, what's the difference? Either repair your hole or repair your hole, and your mirror skill affects how much you repair damage you repair. Okay, so this one, for me, will probably heal me more because my mirror skill's pretty good. Do I want to do that, though? I'm barely hurt. It's not going to cost very much to repair my ship back at London. Let's look for valuables. I'll probably get more interesting stuff. Yeah, Thirsty Bombazine is worth way more than what I'm going to pay to repair my ship. Yeah, look at... These are really huge chunks. And it looks like there's kind of a smooth transition between, like, the cemeteries and... these more industrial... things. They're blended together. Like, the cemetery was built... as an extension of what was already there, or the other way around. that? I think they said they made the Horological Society a separate port, or uh, what's it called? A platform? So they separated it from London? I, that must be what that is, right? Because before, I think it was just London and the Witten Vinegar Lumber Company. Let's go check it out. Do, 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 do. That's my ship down there. That's me. There's another one of me. That humming is what I do all the time. Off camera, by the way. <laughs> the throne of hours, domed and vast, presides over the riot and glory of London. Oh, hold on. Oh. Sorry, I was getting distracted by humming and also looking at this. Is that grass? The ministry is. It's very pretty. A number of instruments of government are located here. The Horological Office. The Office of Works. And the Ministry of Public Decency. Yeah, uh, so... Fuck the Ministry of Public Decency and the Office of Works. I mean, fuck the Royal Horological Office too, but, you know, give me more assignments so I can sabotage more of the clocks. New assignment, please. 
Mm, Kurilin, okay. That's gonna have to wait a while. I mean, I guess that's... That's it, right? Yeah, somebody pointed out I probably shouldn't do any of these quests, because I would be helping... London? No thanks. Back, back, back. Oh god. There's also a dreadnought. A normal dreadnought. That's a lot to face. But if I keep my distance, I should be okay. Shit, I didn't mean to shoot again. Back up. Back up. Oh god. Oh fucking hell. Alright, there's that dealt with. And you're also on fire. Fuck. Oh yes. Okay, okay, we're good. Lockbox. I for always forget what these actually give you. Invitation to Perdurance. I've got 12 now. That's great. <laughs> Glorious Dreadnought. Oh, look at this. You will gain unusual cargo and set back the fortunes of Albion. I don't know what that means, but fuck yeah. The Dreadnought is filled with light. You have to smear the lenses of your sky suit with soot to block out most of the bleaching radiance. 62% chance of success. Success. Discounting the damage done in the battle, the Dreadnought is orderly and clean. The crew had little in the way of personal effects. Only in the captain's cabin do you find an unexpected lockbox. It contains a consignment of souls. Not common souls, either. They would blaze brightly if everything were not already flooded with brightness. According to a set of orders, so terse as to be practically opaque, they were bound for Sky Barnet. A selection of immaculate souls. Oh, weak in Albion. That's talking about the strength of the sun. Right, because that kind of feeds Albion, the clockwork sun. Well, it's already at zero. I've already wrecked Albion, so that's... Good? Question mark? Where's that other dreadnought? I'm in a fighting mood. There you are. Level up. I meant that whole maneuver at the end there to be a lot slicker than it ended up being. Unlicensed chart, yes please. This time it's an actual unlicensed chart. I feel like I'm pretty damn good at combat.
unsettled dreams. Oh, right, I have one nightmares. Blazing gold, crowded with suns in my dream. Seek company. 37% chance of success. I almost always fail this. We had the same dream. Mr. Menagerie is here. So the note that they left talking about the throne of the Hour King. I thought maybe, like, the closest thing I could think of was the throne of Hours, but I don't think it made any mention of a king, so I wasn't quite sure. But I guess it is this place. And since the throne of Hours isn't its own port or anything like that, London is the proxy for that. Right. Uh, yeah, we left the signalman here. Let's do all the stuff. It's higher on crew. Recruitment mission, 4 to 6 crew. 80 sovereigns, 3 crew. Okay. Let's repair our ship. Gotta remember, do not turn in my port reports. I'm saving them for the signalman. Speaking of, how many do I have? I guess just two, because we've only been to two places. I need five. Fully repair my hull. Looks like it's not time to pick up the signalman yet. Not sure how much more time they need. I feel like it's been a while since I left him there. Let's go listen to the stories from Mr. Menagerie. Mr. Menagerie gestures to the throne of hours that scores the horizon like a burst of golden fire. Light rained once. Light hated. No mercy. No bargains. Only judged what is. Now light was. Lights can fail. Mr. Menagerie leans in close, so you're faced with full redness of its eyes, the reek of its breath. We are the haunters of dark. We are the shrieks in the voids. We are the peddlers of midnight. We welcomed lights failing. You bargain with us. We supply your needs. You supply ours. Such novelties you bring to our collections. He brushes an arm, or perhaps a wing, bony and heavy, over your shoulder and turns away. What novelties have we given to your kind? <laughs> what do you mean? It sounds menacing as hell. Acquire nothing. Well, hold on. What do these actually cost? I mean, this one's kind of expensive, the Retronaut, because of the moment of inspiration, which I desperately need for Langley Hall. But like, how about I just collect them all because they're really cool creatures? Like, let's start with the Diffident Bat. I mean, in Otherworldly Artifact. Okay, I just spent a lot of them, so I only have six, but I mean, that's all right. One Vision of the Heavens? Sure. Come on, buddy. A recalcitrant friend. Mr. Menagerie jostles the bat out of his cloak and encourages it forwards. It pulls up a fold of cloth and digs back underneath it. Flicking the cloth, Mr. Menagerie flips the bat out. It hides its face under a wing. Aww. Mr. Menagerie gathers the bat up and deposits it in your arms with an apologetic shrug. <laughs> no need to apologize, I love him. Mr. Menagerie begins to gather up his own things, or its own things, rather, whistling as it does. Chain around its neck rattles as it works. So where are you now? We go to the Messenger Corpse, that squirming ruin of tumbled spires. Oh, well, I mean, that's... That's gotta be the end of their journey, where we present them Mr. Barleycorn's seal, right? I mean, that's the House of Rods and Chains. That's where Mr. Barleycorn is. Right, so I know what I want to do next. They had a couple prospects available. 
one of which is to deliver five literature to the Clockwork Sun. And I don't know if I have any particular business at the Clockwork Sun, but I'm just curious if there's any new things I can do there, especially since the strength of the Clockwork Sun is now zero. So what does that mean? That must mean something, right? Like, is it not even spinning anymore, or...? Well, let's go find out. So I've got the literature in here, and a bunch of fuel, and a bunch of supplies. Before I go, though, I want to spend my level up. Let's do a secret symposium, which is totally new. This hasn't showed up before. Unlock this by having affiliation academic at two or more, and it'll also reduce my nightmares. Oh, you probably hear Transmean in the background screaming, by the way. <laughs> She's very active right now. I love her. In a midnight lecture hall, a cadre of masked experts gathered to present papers on a subject the Ministry had forbidden. Prohibited theories were shared, research partnerships born, who continued to correspond in code on the matters debated. What was the topic of the symposium? And I'm going to go with a forensic assessment of the sun's remains. Following London's relocation, the new astronomy has become a crucial, well-funded discipline, but the fate and physiology of Albion's dead sun are strictly barred from study. It'll give me five veils and three iron. So I wrote a little thing here in Elizabeth's character sheet. I made some friends with the Tacades and other like-minded people during the blockade of New Winchester, and called in some favors so I could join in on a group of heretical academics' meetings about Albion's son. There were some hypotheses about a superweapon being used to murder it. Based on the unused, unclear bomb we found in the tomb beneath the mausoleum, I'm thinking it was something more conniving than a huge bomb. So if I'm understanding this correctly, I can only level up two more times? Damn. Like, I guess I'm endgame? I feel like the game still has so much left for me to do, though. I don't know, maybe once you reach 20, something else happens. Okay, um, where was it? West, southwest. So it's like here, a bit down from the Royal Society, I guess. Hmm, yeah, that tracks, because I think when I was around here, before I started going north, I think I remember seeing some stuff that looked rather icy. It must have been the start of that whole just iced zone around the Clockwork Sun. Okay, well, I'll bring you back when I'm about here. Okay, just about to enter the unexplored. By the way, you might notice that my hole is hurt a little bit. Oh, and here the ice is starting. Unless that's just a bully's acre. Oh, it is just a bully's acre. Let's pay my, pay my respects. Although if I fail, I think I might spawn a scrive? Scrivener? Ah, success. Reduce my terror. Silence as coffins drift past the windows. A stoker removes his hat. Yeah, you might notice my hole is hurt. It's not from getting in a fight. Well, I guess I sort of got in a fight with myself. I did something really... You know, just not smart. <laughs> I had a little hypothesis. I had a question. Oh, this is definitely the start of the whole sun place. The question was, can I explode this rocket fast enough? Well, actually, I wasn't trying to hurt myself. It was just how fast can I make it explode after shooting it out? And the answer is fast enough to blow up in my face and hurt my own hole. So, yeah. I'm not sure if this looks different from how it was before. I feel like all these like white shards everywhere might be new, but I'm not sure. Even though its power is zero, it's definitely still moving. Oh, 
Oh, what is going on? Shrieking alarms and jagged light. Also, why is this pulsing still? It's not going up while I'm not passing time right now. It's good. You step from your train to find the floor rumbling. Machinery is crunching, lurching. A scream of tortured iron from below. Some engineers are rushing back and forth. Others stand in desperate huddles. One beelines to you as you disembark. Leave while you can, he shouts. The steward has gone mad. She's locked herself in some secret place below the vaults. She's doing impossible things to the sun. Flickering, rumbling, the sun dims, brightens, dims again. What the hell are they doing to the sun and... Huh? Are they trying to make it work because it's dying? I mean, the sun's strength is zero. Offer to help. The deeper the deeper engines drive the machinery on the surface. You must access the steward's sanctum and stop her. Oh, I need so the steward's messing things up then. I need to stop them. They're not helping things. Time runs short. The sun blazes. Leaderless engineers gather around you, shouting suggestions that are lost in the noise. Then they go silent as the machinery falls still. The sun, impossibly, brightens. Glass shatters above. A race against time. The stained glass ceiling has broken and light floods in. One of the engineers rips off her boot to reveal a sparkling glass foot. Another sprouts a filth-crusted beard and claims with haunted eyes that he was trapped for a week in a frozen moment. Time remaining before the sun almost certainly explodes. Four hours. Okay, I don't want the sun to explode. Uh, let's see. Priority is fixing the ceiling or no time. You need to access the steward's vault before all is lost. Mm, send your crew to fetch a new pane of stained glass and fix it in place. It might buy you some time. 68% chance of success. That's decent. Do it. Yes. A hasty fix. Working together in harnesses, the engineers and your crew manage to patch over the hole in the ceiling. You gain some time, and your tear has fallen. Good, good, good. So, five hours of time now. Nice. The sun flares, dims, pulsates. Beams of light lance through the air. Your hazard suit is already flaking. You need to reach the vault before the steward kills you all, but time is coming apart at the seams and you don't have much of it left. Okay, veils are definitely going to be the way to go for me. 72% chance, even though my veils are super high. That's to disable the locks. Take an unpleasant alternative route with hearts. Ugh. Rip the door from its hinges. Not a terrible chance. Blow a hole in the sun with my mining drill? Holy shit. You just happen to have some powerful explosives and an enormous drill handy. Why bother with the door? Yeah, uh, let's save drilling a hole in the sun for like a last resort. Let's try to disable the locks. She sealed herself beneath an iron door as thick as the hull of a ship, but you're sure the locking mechanism can be defeated somehow. <laughs> That's the one I fail? Time is running short. The engineers scoff and insist it can't be done. You fetch your tools from the train, kneel at the vault door, and are frustrated to find that they're correct. They would have been better off had they been wrong, of course. An arc of light passes over your heads, and when it fades, you see that one engineer's lips and nose have turned to glass. He turns blue, scrabbling frantically at his face, until a colleague chips his mouth open with a violent application of screwdriver. Ugh. Well, at least you can breathe now. <laughs> Fuck, that's horrible. Time shifts. The clock hand is somewhere different. Um, time remaining before the sun certainly explodes. The surprisingly tedious moment when your life flashes before your eyes. Uh, does that mean we're like basically all out of time? Fucking... Try the locks again. Come on, you can do this. Fuck! Hmm... Time left, the strangled breath between lightning and near thunder. Okay, so I don't know what the fuck is happening with time, because it's messing with time. Come on. Come on. 72% chance. This is my thing. Elizabeth, do it. Yes! 
A satisfying click. The engineers scoff and insist it can't be done. It's rather satisfying to fetch your tools from the train, spend a few minutes tinkering at the foot of the door, and yank it open. Their faces are mingled horror and relief. You hurry down the steps to confront the steward. Deep in the bowels of the sun, you find her working feverishly at a panel of levers and blinking buttons. The floor is heaped in complex tools. She doesn't even turn her head as you enter. Strength of the sun remains unchanged. You demand explanation. She removes her helmet, flashes you a tired, broken glass smile. I'm not trying to destroy the sun. I'm trying to fix it. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Okay, everybody's freaking out. I mean, for good reason, but... I thought they'd be trying to fix it because the sun's dying. For too long, we've settled for just keeping it running while it deteriorates. A little more each time. Something had to change. If I had more time, I'd be careful, but I don't. I was taking risks, shortcuts, putting the sun under stress, pushing its limits, finding where it's weakest. Why now? She's been maintaining the sun for years. When I visited the prisoners with you and saw firsthand the torments the sun was visiting upon them, the steward sighs, I knew something had to be done. The sun knows it's dying. It lashes out, full of rage and spite. It's afraid. It had thought itself immortal. It's amazing that this clockwork sun, something that's been constructed, is also literally alive. Hmm. I can persuade them to stop. 19% chance of that. Huh. Offer to bring her hours. Time can be supplied. You can help her compress months into weeks and years into months. If she, need ti she needs time, she can have it. Thank you, she says, sagging with palpable relief. Honestly, I don't think the sun is fixable, but I have to try. After I've slept for about a week. You can now bring hours to the broken steward. She will require three barrels at a time. Okay. So is everything normal for now? I think. Sunlight seeps like syrup through cracks in the stained glass ceiling. The floor shudders in time with the churning machinery far beneath your feet. The air has a tang of chemicals, bonfires, and rain. Pistons pump, cogs turn, and suit-swaddled figures tend to the enginery, bellowing over the shrieking metal. Write a port report. I've done this before. Is it going to be different? Um, I don't think so. I don't think that's different. I was having problems before, even before it started being weird, extra weird. <laughs> Let's go back to the steward's sanctum. Down here, the sun's innards are bared, an engine that beats like a heart. Pipes and wires crisscross in ways that defy perspective. Cogs turn in both directions at once. You begin to develop a headache. The steward is sitting in meditative silence, a cup of cold tea on the table beside her. She stands to greet you, slow and careful. Did she always have crow's feet at the corners of her eyes? I wonder how often, or how... How many I'm going to need to do of this before they fix it? If they can fix it? I mean, who the hell knows? They don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. I guess I'll just bring as many as I can. <laughs> really? Just an absolute shit ton? Oh, well. That was exciting. Oh, right. I came here because of the prospect. Amongst other things. I totally forgot about that. 950 plus an... Plus an extra 150 experience in a vision of the heavens. I also gained... Wait. Fa faltering? The strength of the sun? Oh, I guess 10 is like... The level 10 strength of the sun is faltering. 
Uh, but anyway, yeah, doing prospects for here actually makes me gain strength of the sun, which I don't think I want. I'm sure having a little bit of it isn't that big of a deal, though. Okay, well, I'm going to save the, I guess, re... What is... How... Scavenging with the Dawn Rats. What is that? Okay, I'm going to save this for the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to see what we can do at the Clockwork Sun.